What's up, Black Comic Lords? It's your boy Paul, back again from a little bit of a hiatus, been busy with life. But I'm here with the FOCs for next week, July 28th, 20, through 2021. Uh, these are FOCs, the final order cutoffs for August 18th of 2021. That's when these books are going to go on sale. So uh, let's get to it. Uh, first up, we got a book I've been looking forward to called Aquarius Book of Myrrh. This is by Eisner Award-winning uh, artist Afua Richardson. You'll know her from her work on Black Panther World of Wakanda. Uh, she was the artist on Lovecraft Country. She's just an incredibly talented, talented, talented artist. And I've been this book has been solicited for over a year. So I've, I've been waiting a while to check this out. It's got, uh, it's basically a story. It's a fantasy story. Um, I'll, I'll read you the solicit what it says. It says, um, it's a, a modern retelling of mermaid myths and legends from all over the world. In 1983, Harlem, something surfaces from the haunted lake of Astara's dreams. She's plagued by visions of ancestors, monsters, and merfolk. What will she sacrifice to finally have peace? It's a quarterly comic book. Um, fantasy, you don't see a lot of black fantasy out there. Um, that's something I, I, I really love. You know, seeing something that we don't normally see black people in black science fiction, black fantasy, comic books. So I'm here for it. I'm really looking forward to it. There are two covers to this, cover A and cover B, which is done by uh, uh, David Mack, who's a very popular cover artist right now. Um, looking forward to it. Next up, we got Black Hammer Reborn, number three. Um, this is this is just continuing the story. I've really enjoyed this book. I don't, I never read Black Hammer before this, so I'm not familiar with a lot of the backstory. Um, if you haven't either, it's not necessary to get into this book. Um, I, I really, it's, it's, it's the telling of this 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 superhero who 20 years later is settled down with a husband and kids um, after getting rid of the husband, she decides to become a superhero again. And um, it's it's been a, it's been it's been a good ride, man. I I, I, I enjoy it. Um, there's a couple covers for this. Look, for me, I'm routinely always gonna pick the covers and show you guys the covers of the book that has the actual black characters on it. It's important. Um, there was a period of time where having uh, black characters on the cover of a comic was viewed as being detrimental. I say there's a time as if that's still not the case, but. It's, it's a lot less now. Um, a perfect example is Fantastic 452. Originally, Black Panther was supposed to have a half mask to reveal that he was black. Um, but Stan Lee said, you know what? I don't think that's going to sell books, cover his entire face, so people will actually buy the book. Um, it's, it's a real thing. So I, I, I will routinely always point out to you guys covers that have black faces on them. Um, just so you know. So I'm picking going with cover B on this one um, as the one to go with. Next up, we've got Excellence. I think this is the final issue, Excellence number 12. It's the final issue of this particular storyline. Um, if you've been into magic and, and again, like fantasy, etc., this is a book for you. You should really check it out. It's a real cross between sort of the superhero genre and uh, fantasy genre. Um, highly recommend it. Uh, written by Brandon Thomas, that brother's constantly working, and drawn by Kari uh, Randolph. Um, so, go get it. It's final book. Uh, next up, Firefly, brand new verse, number six. If you're a fan of the Firefly television series, if you're into sci-fi, uh, this is a book for you. Um, there's a bunch of covers for this. There's one, two, three covers, A, B, and C. Just pick which one you like. Um... It's, it's just a, a further extension of what was a really great television series in the mid-90s. Um, next up, King Spawn number one. Um, this is the first new Spawn title since 1992. Um, it's kind of a big event. They've been building up to it to this point, and we finally have a new Spawn book. Again, uh, as I've told you, uh, 
uh, I'm always going to pick the title, the, the cover that's got the, there's, there's a bunch of covers. There's like seven, eight covers on for this. I'm going with this particular cover, the Booth cover. I think it's Brett Booth. Um, it's got some, uh, um, it's just very stylistic. I, I think it's appropriate too because Brett Booth was one of those artists that was around during the, the 90s boom um, in image comics. So having him on a cover, uh, I think it's an apropos. Next up, Marauders 23. I've really been looking forward to this. Um, solely for one reason. Marvel had a um, uh, choose the next X-Men contest. I don't even know if it was a real contest. They asked for people's votes, but I don't know if it actually worked. Um, I was unhappy with the results. Um, the X-Men who I was hoping would uh, be put on the team was, was Tempo. Tempo did not make the X-Men cut, but she made the Marauders. So I'm really looking forward to seeing. She's a very, very underutilized character in the mutant world. She's incredibly powerful, and uh, she has an extremely high limit for her for her skill sets um, and her power sets. It's really untapped potential, and I think they could do a lot with her character. Um, she's on the same team as Bishop, so I'm, I'm excited. I'm, I'm really looking forward to this one. Um, next up, we have. Miles Morales, Spider-Man, annual number one. Now, this is the annual that ties into the Infinite Destiny storyline. Don't ask me what this is about. It's Miles Morales. Everybody reads Miles. Um, um, I do know that this has to do with uh, a character from the Ms. Marvel book called Amulet. Uh, he's going to be a play a part in this storyline as well. Uh, there's a couple of covers. Uh, I don't have all of them, just the one that I've shown you here because the other one has not come out yet. Um, next up, Noctera number six. Now, you guys know I'm, I'm a big fan of this book. It's been good from, from, from issue one. Just from the art to the writing to the, the premise, which is original. Consistently good book. Um, I'm glad to see that the uh, young brother made it from the last... The last uh, issue was looking kind of dicey, um, but he's back, and uh, they're going to discover what's going on in this new haven that they found. Um, there are three total covers. Again, my cover theory, I'm picking this one that's done by Daniel and My Maiolo. It's cover C. I dig it. It's also a first cover appearance of this character. I don't know who this character is, um, but... We should check it out. Next up, Star Wars The High Republic Adventures number seven. A lot of people are sleeping on the Star Wars High Republic Adventures. I mean, if you're a Star Wars fan, and if you check, and if you're like a spec person and you're, and you're checking the numbers on Star Wars, yeah, you should probably be getting Star Wars books. And people are sleeping on the IDW uh, print of the High Republic think it's a kid's book and it's not um, there's a lot of first appearances occurring in this book issue number 6 good luck finding it because um, it's chock full of just first appearances um, so this is issue 7 I unfortunately don't have any covers for this one um, next up Static Season 1 number 3 you guys know I'm a huge milestone guy Love Milestone tremendously. Um, this has been a different static. And I'm curious to see what they're going to do with this character, what Vita Ayala is able to do with this character. Um, we, we know that uh, there was a lot of issues with regard to uh, uh, static being attacked in his home. Um, and from what I understand in this issue, the government's going to try and somehow get a control of the Bang Babies from the Big Bang. I mean, that leads to a lot of possibilities, whether it be human trafficking, um, regards to civil rights. There's a lot of issues that this will touch upon as a concept. So we'll see what happens. Next up, White, number three, final issue that we uh, are talking about today. Uh, look, if I have to, t if, if, if there are some people that ask, why should I read white? Is it, you know, 
tied into the original book, Black, yet the answer to the, the first, the second question is yes. It is a continuation of the story that you saw in Black. And the first question, why should you be reading white? I would answer it this way. If you, if we were sitting around having a beer, talking about what would be cool if we can make our own comic book, and what are the things that we would do if we had our own comic book company and we didn't have the constraints of a Marvel or a DC and it was our own independent company and we could control what the narrative and make heroes just for us. What would we do? That's the story. Um, it is unfettered by the normal constraints of superhero hero dumb comics. Um, but still, it, it still manages to stay in that realm, in that genre, very well. Um, I was impressed with the first issue, and um, I'm, 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 I'm looking forward to it. I'm here for it. So uh, those are all my picks, guys. Go pick them up, but most importantly, read them. Hey, if you all found any value in these in the work that we do at Black Comic Lords, please do us a favor. Um, give us a like, subscribe, a follow on all of our social media, whether it be Facebook or YouTube, Instagram or Twitter. It really helps us out and uh, helps us with our future. Take care. We got history. Got me feeling the nostalgia when you